We're here with Mr. William P. Sirioli, UF Distinguished Alumnus and Vice President Global Technology for ExxonMobil Chemical Company. Thank you for being here, Will. It was a pleasure. What are the characteristics of a great leader? You know, Camby, I, I really think it's uh, a lot about identifying and managing uh, positive change. And, you know, what I mean by that is a leader really needs to be able to recognize what change is needed. But, of course, that's, that's not enough. Uh, the leader needs to be able to create a compelling case for action uh, and then lead his organization to that, to that change. And I think uh, I learned this from one of the people that worked for me. They, had, they called it the three C's, and they said it was, takes courage, conviction, and consistency. And so when I think about those things, it's, uh, it's kind of the courage to make the change. You almost always have to step across a divide at some point in, in, in time, and it takes a little bit of a leap of faith. And then you need conviction uh, because there's always folks who will resist, uh, resist the change, and the leader's going to be challenged along, along the way. And that's kind of where, uh, that's where the conviction comes in. And then uh, the last area is you have to have consistency, uh, and it's important that people know where you're coming from and how you're going to respond. And uh, uh, if you're inconsistent, then it's difficult for people to follow. Uh, and of course, these kind of skills are really best kind of built up and learned over, over time. What are the greatest challenges you faced as a leader? That's an interesting question. I thought, uh, when, I, when I really think about my 31-year career at ExxonMobil, and I think back, I think the one, thing, one, one thing continues to come back when I think I was challenged the most, and I think it's when you're in a completely new situation. A situation where there's no playbook uh, written written for it, and probably one example of that was uh, you may or may not remember Hurricane Ike, which was a which was a pretty big hurricane. And in my position, I was responsible. I was the emergency response leader uh, for the chemical company, and uh, we'd kind of prepared for our disaster scenario was something that took out would take out our Houston headquarters office and have major damage to one of our sites, and that's exactly what happened in Hurricane Ike. And uh, we had to set up a command center in Dallas. Our Houston headquarters was taken out temporarily. And one of our plants was actually completely flooded uh, with 10 feet of water. And so there I was <laughs> as the emergency response leader. And everybody's kind of looking at you saying, what do we do? And uh, so it was uh, quite challenging and uh, quite exhilarating, actually, as well. And I was able to draw upon the things I'd learned over a long, long period of time on how to how to manage that kind of situation. And so that, that's probably one of the most challenging leadership uh, challenges. And we, we actually rebuilt that site in, uh, in, in record time and, uh, and you know, got back on, on, on production. <laughs> how did your engineering education prepare you for leadership? Well, you know, um, when you think about uh, engineering, I think it teaches you some basics in terms of problem solving. And I think in engineering, everything's quite logical in, in my way of thinking. And I think the rigor of the education uh, program also teaches you to deal with stress and multiple priorities. And uh, there's a lot of problem solving in leadership. And uh, you know, I think actually people behave in a pretty logical way. You may not really think, it, think about it that way, but people do uh, behave in a logical and rational manager. Um, and you have to start to be able to understand how, why people behave the way, they, the way they do. Now, I don't think they teach you all that in, in, in engineering. That's a skill that you build up, uh, build up over time. But I think you get the basic building blocks in engineering then give you a real uh, firm foundation for leadership. What other methods of leadership development were important in your growth as a leader? Well, you, know, you know, one thing uh, I learned along, uh, learned pretty early on that it wasn't uh, just it wasn't important enough just to be right. Um, a lot of times I think when you come from an engineering background, you feel like if you're right, then everybody else will just understand that and superior logic will, will prevail. So I think you have to learn a lot more, of, a lot of influencing skills along the way. And you need to look at things from a different perspective. And as you progress as a leader, you, know, you tend to do more through others. And so the key is to uh, understanding things from a from a perspective of others. And that takes a lot of active listening. And I think, you know, people tend to, like I said earlier, they're logical. They work in their own self-interest a lot. And I think if you can understand where people are coming from, 
you can be a more effective leader. What advice would you give to students who want to be great leaders? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a real firm believer that you don't grow until you get outside of your comfort zone. And, uh, and I think people have an absolute huge capacity uh, for learning and growing their skills. Uh, but in the leadership area, you, you have to gain experience. And you need to be challenged and you need to try new things. And, uh, and you really need to put yourself out there and kind of face your fears of failure. And uh, my experience is that you'll make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. And, uh, but those folks who take the risk and then learn from their mistakes uh, will be much stronger leaders uh, than those who kind of stay within their comfort zone. And so my advice would be to take on the leadership opportunities that, that present themselves and try different things and always be willing to take on learnings from your successes and your failures. What can universities do to support leadership development? Well, and a, you know, a couple of things. Um, you know, one for sure is universities need to be deliberate about, about leadership, which I, which I know th that we are at the University of Florida. Uh, there, you know, there should be formal courses in, in leadership. And I think back uh, over 30 years ago when I was in the chemical engineering college, we had a course and some of the softer skills, and it was taught by the, uh, the chair of engineering. And you know, I found it extremely valuable. And I learned a, a, a lot from that. And I think we also need to build leadership opportunities into the technical course requirements, you know, in the, in the working in teams and the way. Uh, and, and I think be a, there can be a lot of opportunities there. And then I think, obviously, co-ops and internships are a great way for students to develop leadership skills. So you know, the university needs to encourage those and work the curricula such that those can be uh, made possible. How has globalization impacted leadership? Well, you know, clearly globalization has had a huge impact uh, on our leadership challenges. And uh, the diversity of our workforce, competition, suppliers, customers has increased dramatically. You also need to deal with multiple governments, multiple regulatory regimes. In addition to that, you have remote management. And you end up with a lot of virtual global uh, teams in this process. And of course, kind of technology has really made all this possible, but it really, uh, I think it's really up the, up the challenges of managing all those dimensions. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's had, a, it's had a huge impact on the types uh, of leaders that you really need to manage that kind of uh, organization. What key events or people were instrumental in putting you on the path to leadership? Well, it, it's going to sound probably a little bit cliche, but, uh, you know, my mother and my father, uh, re you know, really played a key role. And my father was an entrepreneur, and I think that's where I developed my kind of belief in growth through, through getting outside of your comfort zone. I could have never done the kind of things he did and took the chances and risks that, uh, that, he, that he took. And then, uh, you know, my mother uh, pushed me to come up to the University of Florida, you know, after my junior year in high school, and that clearly put me also on the path of trying new things. And, you know, to this day, I kind of remain open to... Uh, to new experiences, and that's kind of led me around the world, uh, different opportunities in manufacturing and business management and technology. And, uh, you know, at ExxonMobil, which is the company I joined, you know, was a perfect match for that because uh, they have such a culture of leadership development that if, you, uh, if you're kind of open to learning and adapting in that system, it kind of all happens really, you know, quite naturally. Terrific. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Thank you.